More than five decades ago, Kim Novak, the somewhat mysterious star of Alfred Hitchcock's Vertigo, left Hollywood for good. The actress, who had been one of the biggest box office draws, packed all her belongings into her van and drove north from L.A. She decided she was finally done with the phoniness of the film industry. She was tired of being treated like cattle. Her first stop was Carmel-by-the-Sea. She fell in love with the wealthy coastal community and found it gave her a sense of privacy. She lived in an oceanside mansion where she shifted her focus back to her first true love, the visual arts. Two decades later, she moved once again to Oregon to pursue a career as a painter. Novak told People magazine her decision to quit show business was essentially a survival issue. She had lost a sense of who she was and what she stood for. When Novak left, it took quite a bit of time for her to feel like herself once again. But we'll get to that in a second, so bear with us. First, let's see where she came from and how she found her way to the big screen. From refrigerator model to movie star. Kim Novak was born in Chicago, Illinois on February 13, 1933. She's the daughter of Joseph and Blanche Novak. Her parents were both Czechoslovakian. Her dad was a history teacher who also worked as a freight dispatcher for the St. Paul Railroad Company during the Great Depression. Her mother worked in a factory. Kim attended William Penn Elementary and then Farragut High School. After graduating, she attended Wright Junior College before being awarded two scholarships to the School of the Art Institute in Chicago. During spring break of her last year at Wright Junior College, she traveled across the country modeling for an appliance company at trade shows. While at a show in LA, she was crowned Miss Deep Freeze by the refrigerator company. While there, she decided to volunteer to be an extra in a couple of RKO films, including The French Line and Son of Sinbad. That's when she was discovered by a talent agent and signed a long-term contract with Columbia Pictures. From the start, Novak wanted to be an original. She cringed at the idea of becoming just another pretty face in Hollywood. She was determined to maintain her independence. She refused to be bossed around. Columbia Pictures really wanted Novak to be their next Rita Hayworth. Rita was the biggest star of the 40s, but her career had been on a decline, and Columbia hoped Novak would swoop in and bring them the same kind of box office success Marilyn Monroe was bringing 20th Century Fox at the time. In 1954, Novak starred in her first role for the studio in the noir film Pushover. She followed that up by co-starring in the rom-com which premiered the same year. Both films were successful at the box office, and Novak's performances were especially applauded by critics. She starred in Picnic in 1955 alongside William Holden. She followed that up with roles in The Man with the Golden Arm in 55 and Pal Joey in 1957 opposite Frank Sinatra. In 1958, she starred in the biggest film of her career, Vertigo, with the late great Jimmy Stewart. Even though she was at the height of her career, she still felt like she was under the complete control of the studio, which was exactly where she set out not to be. In her memoir, Kim Novak, Her Art and Life, she explained she was both dazzled and disturbed to learn she was being marketed as some kind of Hollywood sex symbol. Even though she was kind of flattered by the gesture, she was willing to put up a fight for her identity. Harry Cohn, production director and big wig at Columbia Pictures, wanted her to abandon her bohemian roots by changing her last name. According to him, no one would want to see a film starring a Polak, as he put it. But she put her foot down and refused to cave to his request. Cohn had wanted her to change her name to Kit Marlowe. He figured audiences would be put off by her Eastern European roots if she stuck with Novak. Of course, she spoke her mind and refused to bend. She defied him once again in the late 50s when she started dating singer Sammy Davis Jr. against his wishes. Hey, by the way, if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And keep watching. In a minute, we'll share with you how Novak's love for animals has inspired her art. She refused to be silenced. Novak writes in her book that Hollywood constantly pressures women to be seen and not heard, especially if they have a pretty face. According to her, people in the industry always assume to know who you are just because of the characters they've seen you play on screen. And these same people also expect you to behave and dress a certain way because they say so. Novak said, it influences you because if you're in some gorgeous sequined gown, you can't run along the ocean and run on the beaches. And that was the kind of sacrifice Novak couldn't justify. She loved nature and being herself, but it seemed like the more immersed she became in Hollywood, the less she felt free to do the things that brought her bliss. She struggled to adjust to her newfound fame. Before long, she started to wonder who she was. She eventually found her peace living in the Rogue Valley of Southern Oregon, where she explored her love of painting. 
the Pacific Ocean, the diversity of wildlife, and the natural beauty of that region inspired her. Connecting with the Animal Kingdom Once she finally left Hollywood, Novak got back into her two main passions, art and animals. Novak considers her teachers to be the animals, and not just pets, but other animals like llamas and horses as well. According to her, the animals will only accept you if you're able to win them over. You have to earn their trust. They connect with people who are genuine, so she had to learn how to become more real with herself. She wrote, That also encouraged me to paint. Everything seemed to flow from that. In the late 70s, she met her second husband, Robert Malloy. He was also a lover of animals and an equine veterinarian by trade. They hit it off after he paid her a house call to treat one of her Arabian horses. Novak referred to him as her soulmate when she announced his death this past December. Novak and Malloy were married for 44 years. He was 80 when he passed away at the couple's home in Eagle Point, Oregon. Age is just a number. I don't feel 87, Novak shared with people. She adheres to the philosophy that you're only as old as you feel. As such, she tries not to keep track of the time. If I did, she explained, I'd be an old lady, and I'm not an old lady. Novak still enjoys riding horses and tries to stay healthy. In 2012, she revealed she had been living with bipolar disorder. She explained she isn't ashamed to be open about who she is, and assured her fans that the medication she was taking was helping. But she pointed out the best medicine is her art. Novak is especially proud of her two favorite films, Vertigo and Bell, Book and Candle, and she's especially grateful for the time she got to spend with her dear friend and co-star, Jimmy Stewart, whom she applauds for not letting Hollywood change who he was. Novak is always happy when someone remembers her from one of her movies, but she hopes they'll also see her as an artist. In 2019, her paintings were put on exhibition at the Butler Museum in Youngstown, Ohio. Novak says Hitchcock has deeply influenced her art as well. She wants her paintings to be mysteries at first glance. Hopefully you've enjoyed reconnecting with Kim Novak. It's inspiring she didn't let anyone or anything hold her back from chasing her true passions. She could have gone on to be one of the biggest film stars of her generation, but instead, she chose to focus on her own path. Do you think she made the right choice by leaving Hollywood behind? Or do you think she should have stuck around a little longer to star in a few more films? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And before you go, be sure to give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.